we're back out here once again. And today we're talking about my absolute best colors for springtime bass fishing. The colors that have gotten me both numbers and quality bass. And spoiler alert, red isn't one of them. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. Oh, there we go, I got him. That's not a bad one. That's a pretty good one right there. Another one on the fluke. There we go. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And as spring moves along, we here in South Mississippi are already firmly in the post-spawn phase for bass fishing. Now, a lot of the country is just coming into pre-spawn bass fishing. And for a lot of anglers, that is a great time of year. It's our favorite time of year for bass fishing because it can be so forgiving. Your margin of error is, well, a lot bigger than it's going to be the rest of the year. We can throw various presentations, and because those bass are so ravenous after a long winter, we can get some really aggressive strikes. And we go from eking out a few on a cold day with really blustery and icy winds to catching a limit in less than an hour. It's a real radical change. However, as we move from the pre-spawn into the spawn, and then from the spawn into the post-spawn, we really need to adjust how we fish, how we present our baits to those bass. Now, as we come from the spawn into the post-spawn, those craw will start to molt in a lot of the country, where you have a lot of the Louisiana type of crawfish, which is common across the country, if you have those type of crawfish in your fishery, they're going to start to molt and that's when they're going to be red while those shells are brand new. And depending upon their food and the environment, the type of water that they reside in, that will dictate whether they turn brown, blue, or sort of a muddy color as the year goes on and that shell gets hardened and it gets old. But that kind of points to what I like to fish. Now, whenever we're in the pre-spawn, I've been known to throw some crazy colors. You guys have seen me throw oranges, and you've seen me throw spearmint blue, and you've seen me throw all sorts of crazy different colors. But as we move into the pre-spawn, my color selection radically and drastically changes. I'm going to more muted and neutral earth tones, like, well, brown. This is a color that a lot of anglers do not throw during the pre-spawn the spawn or the early portion of the spring. They go toward bright red and loud colors. And that's not to say that those can't get bites, but this regular caramel light brown, this is one of the worms that I make, you know, those get really good strikes. Now, I also like to fish something like this chocolate brown, which is a darker brown. These get huge strikes because this looks something natural to a bass. It doesn't really matter whether you have it on a worm, whether you have it on a craw, or whether you have it on some other type of bait. This works really well. We've talked about before how even with my crankbaits, I will have a brown colored crankbait that may even have a craw pattern on it because in my waters and in a lot of the waters that I fish in Florida, in Georgia, in Tennessee, even in Arkansas and Missouri, Something like this gets me more frequent bites and it also gets me bigger bites because those bass are used to seeing red everywhere. In the springtime, everybody's got a red square bill tied on. Everybody's got a red lipless tied on. And don't get me wrong, those can be really great presentations and they can work really well. You will get a lot of aggressive reaction strikes, especially if you're burning them, pausing them and burning them. But when I'm fishing in the post spawn, I'm definitely slowing things down. As those bass are moving back out of the pockets that they spawned in, well, even something like this cranberry color, right? This is a purple blood color. Something like this, a more muted natural tone, will get those huge strikes. And I'm fishing it on something like this, right? 
we've talked about how effective jigs can be. And this is one of the new jigs. This is one of the ones that I'm making and I have not forgotten. Lowbrow is going to be selling his jigs here very, very soon. I had some things come up in my personal life that I needed to address. I had a family member that got very sick that I needed to take care of. So unfortunately that pushed things back a few weeks. Well, it's almost ready and here are the fruits of my labor right here. My new football jig and you can see it's got a wire bait keeper on it. It's got a recessed line tie and it's got a flat head for sitting more upright on the bottom. All of these jig skirts, I tie myself. These are jigs that I make. From the head to the skirt to the hook, everything was done by me. And these will be up for sale very, very soon. But when I'm fishing these, obviously I like to have some sort of natural crawl colored trailer on them. And something like this, again, this chocolate brown, you guys have seen me use, you guys have seen me use the lighter caramel brown. But I'm also using something like, well, this Guggen Kraken Crawl. You can see it's got a very natural color to it. Now it's got a bit of a blue sheen. This is, I believe it's called Bama Bug, but I like that because it pairs well with this natural looking skirt. And obviously this jig has seen better days. This is another one that I've made. This is a great jig that I use for skipping and flipping up under brush, but it is a very potent color. Now, if I'm fishing something like stained water. If I've got water that's got some stain to it, obviously I'm going to add just a little bit more color to it. I've got some orange and some yellow, but I'm not going super, super crazy with it. I'm trying to keep within that natural theme. This will show up a little bit better in stained water, but at the same time, it can still do a great job of looking just like an ordinary regular type of sunfish. Again, it depends on the type of fishing that I'm doing. Now, I also like to use something like a weightless fluke. You guys know that I'm very big on a weightless fluke presentation. I've talked about them a lot and I've caught so many fish on a weightless fluke. And for that, good old white. This is a zoom fluke. And for a soft plastic jerkbait, white is a great year round, all around color. But it's not the only color, obviously, something like this watermelon red can be equally effective. You have to decipher the conditions and what those bass are interested in. But for me, like I said, natural colors, muted colors, things like browns and greens, they produce such huge bass. It's something I'm not seeing a whole lot of anglers doing. I'm seeing a lot of anglers sticking to those bright reds in spring. But what that does is, is that tells those bass, it telegraphs the bass after they've seen 15 red crankbaits right after a while, they know, hey, that's not food. I'm not biting that. So initially you may get a few bites, but within the next few days or the next few times you go out, nobody's catching anything. We need to change things up and we need to keep things varied. You have to show those bass something different because like we talked about before, you have to look at things from the bass's perspective. And again, something like this good old brown Senko. I use these on a wacky rig and I use these on a Texas rig or a Waco rig. And you guys have seen me catch piles of fish on a regular brown worm. There's nothing special about it. There's nothing great about it. It's just regular mud brown. And even in stained water where you wouldn't think something like this would stick out or be attractive or do anything to attract bass, this simple noiseless finesse presentation on a wacky rig has caught me some real giants. Again, you have to think about things from the bass's perspective. You have to think about how they perceive things. And it's not necessarily what we want to throw. We have to think about what they want to eat or what they're curious about. So if you can't get them interested in your bait based on hunger or based on an urge to strike it out of a reactionary strike, get them curious because a lot of times you will have a bass looking right at your bait and you won't even know that bass is there. You have no idea. You've got three or four bass looking at your bait and a lot of times we'll overwork that bait and those bass scatter. So you have to be gentle with it. You have to have a light hand. And whenever you're finesse fishing, you really need to be mindful of how much you're actually moving that bait under the water. And we take it for granted. We think that we're actually moving that bait just a teeny tiny bit 
when we're actually moving it much more than is necessary. So like I said before, if you have a chance, drop your bait, drop something over the side of the boat, a jig, a Texas rig, a wacky rig, or whatever, you know, drop shot, swim bait, and fish it and see how it looks with you normally fishing it. And you might be very surprised at just how much action, just how much you're actually working that bait. And a lot of times we are just overworking that bait. So again, the entire idea of this is, think about it from the bass's perspective. We want to show them things that are natural to them, things that will also get their curiosity picked up. And something like this is going to fit right into their world. They know what this is. It doesn't scare them. In fact, they're curious about it or they want to try to eat it. Either way, it's going to be very enticing for them. And you'd be surprised at just exactly how many huge strikes you can get on just a regular, ordinary brown worm. And something like regular white. I know guys who love fish in white. They use white trick worms. They use white senkos. I like a white fluke or a white saw plastic jerkbait. This is my number one producer. Why? Because it looks like a shad. It looks like a shiner. It looks like something that those bass are already seeing every day in the water. So they're not afraid of it. And the best part about using natural and muted colors in the springtime is bass don't get conditioned to that. If you can mimic what's in their world around them, what's in their environment, if you can mimic those things, it's very hard for a bass to get conditioned. Even if they see others get hooked, even if they get hooked themselves, they still have that instinct. They still have that urge to attack and eat what it is that they're normally going to attack and eat. And if you can use something like a jig or a stick bait or even a fluke, a soft plastic jerk bait and keep those colors natural and muted, especially in the springtime, then you've gone a long way towards convincing those bass and standing out from other anglers who are using bright reds, bright orange, chartreuse all over the place. And sure, they might be catching bass, but after a while, like I said, that bite's going to die down and you're going to have to shift to something else where this like this blood color, this cranberry red, this can be reliable and productive all year long. So there you have it. Using muted natural colors is a great way to stand out to those bass during the spring. They're not going to get conditioned to them because those are colors and textures the bass see in their lives every single day. It's a great way for you to stand apart from other anglers. And we know those lakes and our fisheries are only going to be getting more crowded from here on out. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.